Hey guys, Kel Tegan. Welcome back to the channel. If you haven't done so yet, please, I ask you to subscribe down below. So today I'm going to talk about something that I feel needs to be talked about. In January of 2021, I gave birth to a little boy named Crucian. He passed away six days later. And I want to share with you today the things that really helped me that people did or said after losing my child. In the very beginning, like the first week that I lost my child, I was so um, drained. I did not even have the energy to talk to anyone. So when people would text me, it was great. I really appreciated getting text messages. There were three different texts that were very comforting to me. Number one, when someone would say, I'm sorry this happened, or my heart breaks for you, or this is so devastating, um, or I'm praying for you. Those things were very comforting to me. The second type of text that was wonderful was when someone wanted to bring something by, like whether it was a meal or just something for the kids or uh, they wanted to drop off anything, whatever they wanted to bring by, they would text me and say, I'm going to bring this by and I'm happy to leave it on the front porch. I'm happy to leave it at the door. Or if you're up to it, I'm happy to come in and visit for a little bit if you want to talk. And to me, that was so comforting and it was so wonderful because then I had a way of saying, um, if I wanted them to come in, then I would say, oh yes, please, when you get here, just ring the bell. Just, I want you to come in. Or if I wasn't up to it, which was hardly ever, I wanted to see people. Then I, if I wasn't up to it, I could say, oh yes, if you could just leave that there, I'm so grateful for that. So that was the second type of text that was wonderful. The third text, someone would say that they wanted to do something for the kids. That warmed my heart more than anything I can even think of because they were so caring for my other three kids at the time. Um, they might, things they might have said were, can I come by and take the boys to um, urban air, to the jump place, the trampoline place? Or can I pick up um, Aspen, my daughter, and um, would she like to come over and, and hang out with, you know, one of her friends? Um, and the mom would text me that and say, could we come by and pick her up? Is she, does she want to come over? And, and things like that. That was really great. And I have to say at the beginning, the family, um, me and my husband and the kids, we just all wanted to be together. Like, we did not want to separate. We were like, it's hard to explain, but we were actually scared to separate. In fact, when my son passed away, we, that night, we pulled extra mattresses into my room and we all slept in that room. And we actually all slept in that room for two to three weeks. We just did not want to go sleep in the other room. I and I didn't want my kids in the other room because I had just lost one of my kids. And I wanted my other kids 
as close to me as possible. I didn't want to let them out of my sight because I wasn't scared that I was going to lose them, but I just, I needed them to be with me. When someone would say, do you want to tell me the story? Do you, do you feel like telling me the story of what happened? And my answer was always yes. In fact, every time I told the story of Crucian, I healed just a little bit more until I told the story. I probably told his story a thousand times. And then I could tell I was healing because I didn't feel that need to have to tell every single person I came in contact with. When Crucian first passed away, if I was in the grocery store or I was wherever I was, I don't know, I was on the phone with the, I don't know, paying a bill or whatever it was, I would just feel that need, like I need to tell this person what happened to Crucian. And I remember my kids after going to the store one day and they were with me and they just looked at me and said, mom, how come you tell everyone about Crucian? And I was like, I don't know. I just, I feel like they need to know. When you ask the person, do you want to talk about your child? Then that is comforting. I think that's comforting. Um, the third thing is I want to hear my child's name. So my biggest fear was that no one was going to remember that he existed. I was so scared that everyone was just going to forget the name Crucian and forget that I had another son. That was so scary to me. And so when I would hear people use his name, oh, it was like music to my ears. I just loved that. So using, using that child's name. And I remember one of my friends coming over and we were talking about homeschooling. And she was asking me what curriculum I was going to use for, she meant for Venture, my um, second to youngest son, because Crucian was my youngest son, but Venture is his older brother. And I remember her saying something like, well, how's Crucian doing in math? And I thought, oh my gosh, she just said Crucian. She means Venture, but she said Crucian. And that was like the happiest day of my life. I felt so much joy when she accidentally switched their names because I heard his name and it just made me feel like, almost like he was here. And I can't tell you how much um, joy that brought me. I mean, I have like goosebumps talking about it. It's crazy. I mean, I still think about that day and it like brings tears to my eyes sometimes because it was so happy. It made me so happy. So hearing our child's name is huge. I want to say this, and I know everyone's different in how they grieve. But for me, I kept Crucian's um, little pack and play crib. It was set up in my room. I kept that there. I kept his clothes there, his diapers um, his swing. I had pictures of him everywhere. I mean, you couldn't hardly get through my house without like seeing a picture of Crucian, like, you know, three feet from the last three feet you walked, like every three feet you would see pictures of him. And for me that I needed to see that because again, I was so worried that he was going to be forgotten. You know, this is a very special boy and, and he lived for six days and I don't want anyone to forget that. Whatever it is 
the person that's grieving um and we're all different but if that is the way someone grieves to have lots of pictures and and that's comforting to them then it's not your place to say you need to take those pictures down you don't need to give your opinion of how this person is supposed to grieve and your job i i think is to just be there for that person now i know I was very self-absorbed during this time and um, I really was acting like a victim. I was, I was a victim. I thought um, because I lost a child that I was owed something and it's hard to even explain, but it's kind of like if I would go somewhere and need to pay for something, I would think, um, well, you should just give that to me. I lost my child. Money became very weird to me. It became like, it almost became an obsession. Like, well, why am I having to pay for this? And I would get so stressed out and I'm like, well, first I lose my child and now I have to pay for this. It sounds ridiculous now when I say it, but my mindset back then, it was crazy. So I hope this has been helpful. If you have other questions or things that you might want to know, please drop it in the comments below.